mini Mario toy. It walks, it talks, it says, Mamma Each one comes in its own crystal ball. Collect one, collect them all. 20 years before it became a challenge to track down certain Mario toys in the form of Amiibo, Nintendo made a Game Boy Advance game about the challenge of tracking down certain Mario toys in the form of wind-up mini Marios. That game was Mario vs Donkey Kong, a puzzle platformer that portrayed the popular plumber pursuing the barrel-heaving ape through a series of trap-filled levels, grabbing as many mini Mario toys as he could get his hands on along the way. <laughs> now the 2004 original has been remade for the Nintendo Switch, complete with a couple of new worlds, additional modes, and a significant visual makeover. It may still be fairly brief and light on challenge for the most part, but nonetheless I found retrieving the Mario Toy Company's stolen stock against the pressure of a ticking clock to be a mostly engaging endeavour. <laughs> Yes, you heard that right. In addition to being a plumber, a kart racer, an athlete across several different sports, and even a pill-slinging doctor, Mario is apparently also the head of his own toy company like some sort of Tonka Willy Wonka. As it did in the original, Mario vs Donkey Kong's story opens with the impish ape charging into Mario's factory, <laughs> scooping up all the mini Mario toys and shoving them into his sack like a smirking simian Santa Claus. <laughs> The difference now is that these scenes are fully animated and packed with personality, hey. unlike the mostly static sequences of before. Hey, back here. In fact, broadly speaking, the primitive visual design of the original hasn't just aged poorly, it started out uglier than Waluigi's smile even by 2004 standards, Look out. thanks to environments that pulled from a fairly limited colour palette, and characters so heavily pixelated, it appeared they were trying to hide their identities as a result of crimes they'd committed against the Mushroom Kingdom. <laughs> Thankfully, this new version of the 20-year-old portable puzzle platformer puts the strain on your reflexes and brain rather than your eyes. <laughs> Mario, Donkey Kong, and the various enemy types are uniformly sharp and coated in a sheen of contemporary Nintendo charm and the eight worlds on offer each provide a series of striking death trap dioramas. From the lush green canopies of Donkey Kong Jungle, to the lethal rising lava of Fire Mountain. This modern Mario vs Donkey Kong might be styled up in a fresh pair of high definition dungarees, but underneath the sharp new looks, the heart of it remains unchanged. Mario's moveset is identical to the original version. He's still able to smoothly flip over into a handstand to protect himself from falling projectiles with his feet, as well as pick up enemies and throw them at other foes, or place them onto spiky surfaces in order to use their heads as mobile platforms. Given the absence of the word super in the title, it's no shock that there's no sign of fire flowers or superstars, let alone the wackier pachyderm power-ups of Super Mario Bros. Wonder, but there are still some entertaining ways to topple the handful of enemies in each stage. From fruit that can be dropped down on enemy noggins, to playing a momentary game of whack-a-mole with one of the hammers from the original Donkey Kong arcade games. The bulk of Mario vs Donkey Kong's bite-sized levels are each split into two rooms. In the first, Mario must collect a key and carry it to the level's locked exit, which is easier said than done since he can't climb ladders or perform any acrobatic moves while holding the key, and if he drops it for longer than 12 seconds at a time, it teleports back to where he found it. Yep. In the second room, he needs to navigate a fresh set of obstacles in order to retrieve one of the stolen mini Mario toys that slipped out of Donkey Kong's Gorilla Grip. <laughs> which is typically a more straightforward assignment, but there can occasionally be interesting wrinkles like rising lava to light a literal fire underneath you. Each world culminates in a slight variation on the same simple boss fight against Donkey Kong, but not before Mario turns from plumber to Pied Piper, and you get to lead all the mini Marios you've previously collected to safety in some clever change-up challenges that are reminiscent of the classic Lemmings series. Its overall degree of difficulty might be a far cry from that of Celeste or Super Meat Boy, but the fact that Mario can be felled by only one hit means there's still a strong emphasis on precise platforming. 
Mamma mia! Reaching the goal of each stage doesn't just rely on self-preservation though, since most levels also require the careful manipulation of coloured switches that reveal hidden platforms or reverse the direction of conveyor belts for example, and getting the sequence and timing right is a consistently fun task, as you puzzle your way from one lively escape room to the next. While Mario's quest to reclaim the contents of his toy chest take him from the industrial factory floor to the boo-haunted hallways of a spooky mansion, I found that the two new worlds created specifically for this remake were home to some of the most memorable levels in the whole adventure. Merry Miniland introduces nifty new elements like flower-powered fans that allow Mario and objects to float across gaps, as well as teleported blocks that blink him from one corner of a stage to another. Meanwhile, Slippery Summit lives up to its name by coating the bulk of its platforms in ice, allowing you to use Mario's momentum to slide through small holes in the terrain and turn fallen stalactites into steps. They're both welcome additions to the 2004 game's foundation and feel like clever new takes on the formula rather than simple rehashes of the existing ideas. Even with those added levels, completing Mario vs Donkey Kong's 8 worlds for the first time still only takes a few hours, but you do unlock alternate plus versions of those worlds. Yahoo! Each consisting of 6 additional levels and a slightly reworked boss fight, which took me another 3 hours or so to complete. <laughs> Oddly enough I found that this second set of levels was for the most part substantially easier to finish than the first, including the final boss fight, which made Mario vs Donkey Kong's overall difficulty feel a little front-loaded. Like playing the front nine holes at Pebble Beach, and then the back nine at a shopping mall mini-golf course. This was true of the original version too, and I'm slightly disappointed that although Nintendo was happy to reshuffle the level structure to accommodate the two new worlds, it didn't also put some work into bending Mario vs Donkey Kong's difficulty curve into a gradual incline as opposed to a parabola. That said, there is still a collection of expert levels to unlock by earning gold stars throughout the main adventure. These noticeably more challenging stages have grown in number from 12 up to 16, and are more trap-filled than the Billboard Hot 100 chart. Oh, mamma mia. Additionally, there's the option to retry every new level in the new time attack mode, which shaves a substantial amount of seconds off the clock and forces you to pinpoint the most efficient path through each obstacle strewn stage. It's nice to have these extra time trials, although I wish there'd been more incentive to complete them. Perhaps if beating them unlocked extra character costumes or concept art, for example, instead of just a tiny gold medal displayed on the level select screen. Although I welcome these harder challenges, the increased demands of both the expert and time attack levels did unfortunately expose some of Mario vs Donkey Kong's minor control quirks. On a number of occasions, Mario would stubbornly refuse to grab onto a ladder or a chain, whether I was using the D-pad or the thumbstick, Yahoo! and at other times he would die if he landed on top of an enemy ever so slightly left or right of the middle. Oh, mamma mia! Nintendo's platforming mechanics are generally as sharp as a bear hug from Bowser, so I was surprised to find these occasional sloppy edges. Oh, mamma mia! I have, however, had a good time replaying some of my favourite stages with my son in the new two-player co-op. Toad can team up with Mario at any point in the adventure, and although it's fundamentally the same level layouts, the biggest change is that there are two keys to collect in each stage instead of one, it does create its own form of enjoyable collaboration and chaos that sets it apart from playing solo. <laughs> However, it strikes me as being a little strange that the new casual difficulty setting, which gives you five invincibility bubbles per life, can't be activated during co-op. So if you're playing with a younger or more inexperienced partner, they're forced to play in the classic difficulty where one hit kills, <laughs> and are therefore likely to quickly eat away at your shared stash of extra lives, putting a potential strain on the partnership. <laughs> Thankfully, the new chase-based 1-up minigame that typically pops up once per world is a lot more fun than the slot machine-style game of chance in the original, so clawing back some of those quickly burnt lives is at least a more appealing undertaking than it was before. Coming in the wake of Super Mario Bros. Wonder's psychedelic splendor, 
Mario vs Donkey Kong's update of the 2004 Game Boy Advance version is a markedly more modest Mario adventure in scope, but I still enjoyed puzzling my way through its trap riddled rooms while they lasted, particularly those found in its playful pair of brand new worlds that have interesting new takes on decades old mechanics. The lopsided difficulty of its main levels could have perhaps been better smoothed out so it becomes more challenging as you go rather than easier, and some occasional control flaws seem below the standard I've come to expect from Nintendo platformers, but its completely overhauled art is packed with personality, and its two-player co-op mode puts a fun new spin on familiar gameplay. Mario vs Donkey Kong might not be as polished as a mini Mario toy fresh off the assembly line, but it's just as full of charm and fun to play with. For more Nintendo remakes, check out our reviews of Super Mario RPG and The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. And for everything else, stick with IGN. Hurry, buy one, buy them all! Buy them all! Buy them all! Buy them all! Buy them all.